everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So a little earlier today, we did the final stream on Debbie now as she's moving out of the Northeast at long last. We're essentially done with this system, but boy has she left her mark with the flooding, unfortunately. And there are quite a few people, unfortunately, that did not make it through the storm. So that being said, we still have to look at what's next as our thoughts and prayers are with those who are lost. And things do get kind of interesting after that point. Not so much in the short term, but in the long term here. So obviously, Tornado Watch is starting to wither away here. We haven't had any tornado reports. And of course, severe reports. It's looking like a relatively slow day. There could be a couple areas over here, as you see with the marginal risk, where we could get some damaging winds and hail. And then we actually end up going on a uh, severe weather downtrend for a little bit, which is nice. We have a marginal risk tomorrow, main threats, wind and hail, marginal risk at best, and then the 20th threat is less than 2%. Keep in mind though, this year we have seen a lot of events occur or tornadoes occur during days where we had less than 2% chance. So don't let your guard down. If you have a thunderstorm forecasted for your area or if you're in that marginal risk, still keep an eye on the weather. It's just not perhaps not as urgent but uh, as we all know the weather is full of surprises it's the hardest thing to one of the hardest things to predict so we go towards day three however we don't have any severe risk at the moment hopefully that this trend stays that way but thunderstorms are still expected across pretty much the entire state of florida maybe a small portion of the panhandle may not get storms then again we all know how it works over here towards the coast with that moisture on onshore flow and any sort of lift mechanism, thunderstorms are still possible. Of course, out west, it's been kind of busy. It still is, but the ingredients for severe weather just aren't really all that prevalent at this point, which is good news. I'm definitely not complaining about it. Then remnant, remnant uh, moisture, a little bit of energy left over from Debbie could spark a few additional thunderstorms over towards the great lakes here especially over towards new york in particular so buffalo rochester watertown even all the way over towards binghamton need to be on the lookout for maybe a couple rumbles of thunder possibly now the interesting thing is when we get to day four through days four through eight potential is too low on day four but right after that every day is showing predictability too low and while that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be some big severe weather event the potential starts to return after that point. So anytime after August 13th, the threat for severe weather goes up ever so slightly. As far as looking at models are concerned though, I haven't seen anything that's caught my eye in particular that just jumps out to me as a red flag. We do get a little bit more of a notable pattern change here. We do start to see some changes in regards to some of the upper levels in particular start to see a little bit more ridging out towards the central and eastern parts of the u.s especially towards the south here so we're still going to be dealing with those warm temperatures especially over towards the gulf states so shower and storm activity may start to decrease ever so slightly as we go forward eventually though we do end up getting a new trough that starts to kick in over here and eventually we could watch both Ohio Valley, maybe even Tennessee Valley, and also the Western High Plains start to get in the action here with shower and storm activity. Another thing to watch for is this feature right here. This is likely to become Ernesto. Just what strength that will be at is still, uh, the, it's still up for question, but I'm pretty sure that this at least makes it to tropical storm or hurricane. And what I want you to pay attention to are a couple of things here. This is the developing trough that we're looking at right here where I have the cursor. And of course, this would be, this is more than likely going to be Ernesto. Watch what happens as we continue to go forward here. This is gonna make a very close pass to the Northeast. Because if you also look on the bottom left corner here, I have the Euro running and we're at, the simu we're at a similar time frame, maybe just a little bit behind on the Euro because it only goes to 240 hours. But in any case though, the thing to pay attention to is this, this trough right here. It deepens over the Eastern half of the US. So we're 
we're switching back into a positive PNA. So the temperatures may cool down just a little bit over here and they're gonna rise over here. But the other thing that this trough effectively does is kick this storm back out the sea. This may make a pass on Nova Scotia, may, may even make a landfall. But as far as the US is concerned, based off of this look right now, and this is still very much uncertain, it does look like we may be spared a direct impact. This still will have its own impact, still will likely bring shadow and storm activity over towards the Northeast if this run comes into fruition. Obviously, we're 282 hours out. We're closing in on two weeks at this point. We're well over a week and a half for sure. So with that in mind, we'll have to see what happens. We'll, of course, be making update videos on this as we go along here. But the weather pattern itself, along with the tropics, are going to be a big factor as to how our weather ultimately will turn out, of course, over the next couple of weeks. And then an interesting shift begins to happen as we get towards the end of this model here. This ridge starts to dissolve, and we end up seeing a pretty fair weather pattern start to take shape here. See a lot of zonal flow. So as far as the severe weather threat, I think we're going to be kind of uh, flip-flopping on and off. Such can be the nature sometimes of August, given the fact that we're starting to get ever closer towards fall here. We're racing through this year. It's all happened pretty fast, I would say. But another thing, to, as I mentioned before, while looking at the upper level wind pattern here, is going to be the temperatures. Now, we anticipated that ridging out to the west, and we're going to end up seeing those temperatures start to rise as a result of that still going to be hot over towards the southeast for the next couple of days here for sure but as time goes on here eventually we're going to start to see that heat begin to migrate off to the west here this is getting towards the afternoon hours here towards the southeast on the 15th here where if we go back a couple days before we're in the 90s now we're starting to get into the 80s here we're starting to see more widespread 80s 90s becoming a little bit more isolated but if you're in the in the uh, southern plains here, central plains, still going to be baking, unfortunately. As time goes on with that trough that we were talking about coming through, that's going to help knock down the temperatures a bit more, especially towards the Midwest and even the Ohio Valley. Now, eventually, it's the cool thing to note here is even though we're on the temperature mat, you can see what is likely to be Ernesto right here. Very cool thing to see on, on a model that's not on a... Um, map and model that's really not designed to show a tropical system so to any of my any of my people here who are fans of uh psychedelics here that's nice little image some nice little imagery for you as time goes on though we do start to see that heat begin to spread back out to the east ever so slightly We're still in the 80s getting back into the 90s most likely but as we go further along here I noticed that we're seeing a cool down across the board towards the end of the month for both the east and the west here. So big shift is coming. And we did talk about that in our August outlook. Link to that, by the way, will be in the top right hand corner here. All right. Now shifting gears into a little bit more of the severe weather side of things. There's a couple of things that we're going to be uh, taking a closer look at here. Obviously, one of the important parameters of severe weather is moisture content. If the... Uh, Dew points toward the surface and the mid levels are too dry, obviously severe weather or too moist severe weather isn't typically going to happen. There are exceptions, of course, not going to really get too far into that right now. But obviously, as we mentioned before, troughs usually serve as good lifting mechanisms and usually there's a clash of air masses out ahead of it. So as we continue to go on here, of course, as we mentioned before, the severe weather threat or severe weather potential is going to be too low over the next few days so we're going to somewhat disregard where we're seeing those more ripe dew points but as time goes on here you can start to see that moisture begin to surge out towards those western high plains as we get towards the beginning of next week especially as we get towards tuesday and beyond here so we start to see that moisture begin to be set in place here for both the central plains western plains and then even the midwest itself as we continue to go forward so with that in mind I am thinking that there's going to be at least a few days where severe weather potential will notably increase. I'm mainly thinking we're going to have damaging wind threats. Typically during this time of year, we don't have really strong kinematic setups or wind patterns that are conducive to tornadic events. Not saying that tornadoes can't happen. 
In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a few spin-ups, but nothing like the outbreaks that we saw earlier in the spring of this year. So not much in the way of concerns to be had there. Still be watchful is really all I'm trying to say at this point. But as time goes on, and especially as we move further along, you can start to see see what I'm going to guess will be Ernesto into the picture here as we get towards a week out here. Also notice that this is an area where I mentioned that trough also coming into play here that developed. So there could be chances of shower and storm activity over towards the Ohio, even the Tennessee Valley Southeast could be possible here. There could maybe be a day or two where we end up getting severe storms. And then eventually I do still think even with this system making a close pass here that we could maybe get some additional severe weather just do the storm making a close pass and maybe serving as somewhat of a lifting mechanism also being a source an additional source of moisture so we all know hurricanes have incredible amounts of energy so this could maybe help fuel a setup over here towards the northeast of course it's more or less hearsay at this point because we're passing 10 days out at this point so it's just more or less a hunch or just kind of a leap out there so to speak in regards to that the cool thing is though after we have that system move through we do start to see those dew points drop out to the east it seems like it's been a constant all year to have those 60 and 70 degree dew points with very few breaks in between if any for some of us so unless you're over towards the uh, coast here we actually start to see those dew points drop off a little bit we're in the 50s some places even getting into the 40s here over towards the east anywhere east of the mississippi river out west it's pretty daggone dry in fact wildfires have been a big problem over here and it looks like unfortunately they still are going to be especially up towards the northwest northwest is getting really hit, uh getting uh hit really hard with those wildfires uh there are numerous amounts of those spreading unfortunately so hopefully we can get some moisture here soon but in regards to what's expected beyond this point here we aren't really getting too much of a break we are starting to even see a little bit more in the way of uh, monsoonal moisture out towards the new mexico and arizona regions here so this might help with the wildfire situation out towards the southwest but we also need a little bit of love over here towards the northwest as time goes on here so as we continue to go forward we're also going to take a look at the lightning flash density this is a good indicator of where our storm activity is going to be the highest this goes off of forecasted lightning flashes per day and as we continue to go forward here you can see of course the next few days while severe weather isn't quite as prominent of a threat still thunderstorms are very much in the forecast and this is kind of what i was referring to earlier just just because you don't have a severe weather threat doesn't mean that regular old thunderstorms can't be dangerous so especially during the summertime a lot of people unfortunately will end up being caught outside during thunderstorms and potentially struck by lightning flash flooding is also a big deal so just make sure you're paying attention really we want to keep you all safe if i can as time goes on though this is getting into tuesday this is where we start to see that potential for severe weather begin to return and we're starting to see a lot more activity here this little area that i'm looking at up to 14 flashes a day per kilometer over here so that being said that says a lot in regards to that trough that's going to be coming in and also those trigger mechanisms as we continue to go further along here eventually we start to see more and more regions with height, uh, heightened lightning flash density probabilities as we continue to go into that week ahead here especially as we make that close pass the system here so interestingly enough obviously since we only are looking at the euro this is the only model that has this by the way looking 240 hours out start to see a slight increase in activity over here and we also start to see more activity over here too we did see a little secondary trough over towards this region so this isn't that surprising but seeing the uh the density here does kind of pique my interest so this could be a sneak preview to some of the weather we might have to be on the lookout for here of course we'll be making further updates as needed so we'll look at a final forecast here and this is going back to the GFS, so we're looking all 16 days here. We watch Debbie move out. Showers and thunderstorms are still going to be uh, 
prominent across the western high plains and even the central plains even the uh, southeast especially towards florida it's going to be a big deal which really they don't need that considering they just had debbie as time goes on here we do start to see that severe weather potential begin to rise once more especially as we go from tuesday into wednesday more prominent threat really starts to show itself i would say on wednesday heading into thursday like i said i really just think it's going to be more so damaging wind and hail threat than anything else i don't see anything organized in regards to a tornado threat at all alexa turn on lights my lights go off automatically at eight o'clock and now they don't want to come back on we'll finish the video in the dark though here is our tropical system that we're keeping an eye on of course this is towards the 17th time frame i really think this storm makes a close pass by the time we get towards the 19th or the 20th here and then of course we're having to keep an eye on the ohio valley for severe weather potential as we go further along timing i think is going to be a really big topic when it comes to this system here because it could determine whether or not this makes landfall or makes a very close pass to the northeast or if this ends up being pushed out to sea it all depends on what that trough and that um, low pressure end up doing of course after that point here's our fair weather pattern we get a couple of days of that and then before we know it we're starting to get more activity once more to close to, as we get towards the back half and end of this month here but with that that concludes the video thank you all for tuning in also again thank you guys for helping me get this channel to a thousand subs like i said onward and upward from here and until then you guys take care have an awesome rest of your night nothing but love for you guys the entire metal weatherman take care